Just don't buy a festal domino, that is, of course, a very, very succinct video title. Not just here on this channel today, there are already many, many videos in which devices are shown with which you try to copy a festal domino or the system more cheaply. Very quick disclaimer at this point, of course the festal domino is a fantastic machine, because that is not what I want to convey with this video, but I will show you something else that can do a bit more than a festal domino. Yes, and in keeping with that, we will of course build a project today, which should go here, because you can see that this is a really untidy corner. It's not about the table router, it's much more about these sanding belts from my wide belt sander. I'll put them together quickly. We have a few sanding belts over there. Not only is it extremely messy, it's also just not a nice workflow because you always have to look and say, okay, what is another abrasive grain that works somehow? That's just not good. That's why we're going to come up with a solution today so that this is definitely solved better. I've planned the project through. We can now cut some solid wood to size and then go back to the workshop. There are still a few canthus left over from my office back then. They look great, but let's take care of them right away. We can roughly remove them for now, but they look pretty battered. These are my runs. There's going to be a bevel on them. I have a device for them. I'm going to modify it a bit so that I can cut angles on one side. I'll link you in the top right corner to how this device was made. I'm going to dismantle this and reassemble it here so that I can then simply copy a bevel here. Then this is a device for miters and for tapers. First of all, I need a repair edge. I cut it myself and so that I always have the same distance so that I don't have to assemble it now. I take my longitudinal stop so that I can simply find the device on the longitudinal stop later. This is my line. I want to cut this bevel. This is my stop. I can align it from here. The distance here is also important so that we always cut the taper flush at the front. I'll slide it in here to fit and then we'll just use a simple screw to use the stop. Yes, I know, that was relatively close to the saw blade, but close means what hasn't touched yet. So it worked wonderfully. I was really impressed with this device. Above all, we don't need any kind of additional device for a taper of a cantilever arm end, which we're going to assemble here in a moment. Assembly is the right keyword. We have six cantilever arms and I want to show you the cool thing about the machine that I'm going to use today. Because first of all, we're going to make a very, very stable slot. So similar to this flat dowel domino milling machine. I have now marked everything so that we can go straight to the slot drilling machine, because that is the machine we will be using today. And I will also show you another great option that the flat dowel domino milling machine cannot do. Okay, of course the flat dowel domino milling machine has its first advantage here, because we could now simply make a center mark on each part, mill the whole thing and then assemble it together. 
I don't want to deny that. This is of course a very, very classy thing about this machine. We now need to quickly set up our slot drilling machine. This is the machine of desire. I gave it a complete makeover in one of the last videos. I welded a bit of cast iron so that this extender works again. The stops now work again without having to use the hammer. And above all, we now have a nice support surface with the appropriate stops so that the entire system simply works well. But I'll bring you back to it for a moment and show you what I've marked. I have a marking here, it's a centimeter. It could also be 9 millimeters or 8 millimeters. It doesn't matter, it just has to be the same, because from this marking we will adjust our slotted hole upwards on the machine. How far up the whole thing goes isn't that important. It's just important that this marking starts over and over again so that the whole thing matches our vertical, which is marked at the back. Now the extender can be adjusted upwards for now, we don't need it yet. And first I'll adjust the height on the slotted hole machine. That's not so important now, because we'll just adjust the reference edge from below on the vertical. That means it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, it just has to be roughly in the middle so that it can accommodate the stability better. Then I'll bring my stops over here. I'll attach them straight away. Now I can simply push my cantilever arm in here, clamp it in place and mill. Now we obviously still need to adjust the stops. We'll go roughly here up here. Now we need to adjust the lower stop. That's fine. Upper stop. Lower stop. Now the depth again. We'll go roughly, yes, I should have said, to this depth. That's fine too. Check the stops once. And that's it. Now we can position our extender here. And the whole thing is now ready to be milled. It was that easy. Our screw clamps can now be moved over. I just stored two of them directly next to the mortise drilling machine. What's next? Actually, it's relatively simple. We have our strut here. Um. I'll just look at the strut briefly, we can put it under here now. A lot of talk and yet nothing said, right? I've aligned the whole thing. I'll do it first and then I'll show you in a moment, just a moment. We've now milled the counterpart. I'll now move it to the next marking. Turn the spindle a little, put it in place, clamp it tight and that is our marking so that we can now move in that direction. Here on the right we have the stop and going in the other direction we need the second marking because that's where we have the stop that we found on the machine. We also have the hole. Now we can slide to the next position. This is going to be a bit tricky. Theoretically I could put a block under the back, but I'll see if I can align it just like that. We've already attached that. We can do that now. After I've diverted the whole thing, we can mount it higher up. That fits perfectly. Now we come to the last thing. Align it a little. And you can see that's how our first connection turned out. In fact, as is always the case, the full guide effect. This is the tightest connection. We have a bit of play here, but that's okay. And back here, that's actually perfect. It could of course be the case that I fired it through the thick planer quite violently, which is why we have a bit more play in our homemade domino. But that's not a big deal. This will probably happen anyway, because we have a bit more space in the connection at the top and bottom because of the curve. That was gluing or sticking it with poor glue anyway. In this case it's a bit quicker anyway, so it's a good application. So, I've just shown you the first type of connection. This is a type of connection that is particularly stable. The advantage of the mortise and tenon drilling machine is that you can choose the width freely. And the other great thing about it is that in combination with a table router you can also mill a full tenon on the end piece and then the pocket or the part of the tenon. 
you can simply mill it with the mortise and tenon drilling machine. It's just great because you can build such wide connections, especially on doors or super easy piece. But something else that is also possible, and this is a real advantage, is dowel drilling. I don't really like doing dowel connections, except with the mortise and tenon drilling machine, because it's particularly easy with this. And that's why we're going to grab a couple of dowels, rearrange the machines a bit, and I'll show you how it works. So, here we can see a previous video, which I'll link to in the top right. In it I showed you how you can make these small parts boxes yourself really cheaply. Um, I really, really like using it, as you can see here, for the small parts. I've got all my milling cutters and the right drill bits for the mortise and tenon drilling machine in here. Here we can also see two very, very interesting milling cutters. That's another advantage of the mortise and tenon drilling machine. It's a, what do you call it? A face milling cutter. And with it I could simply make a milling cut and have a countersunk flat spot straight away to screw a pan head screw into the wood, for example. I only recently dug it out again. I'm storing it here now in case I need it. And here we can see another great milling cutter. We have a round head here. I don't know when I'll need it yet, but it might be quite exciting for one or two projects. Because we can now mill this shape in. In case you're wondering which milling cutters I'm using here, these are actually milling cutters from Metalworking. I bought up the whole milling cutter set. They're brand new, they're incredibly sharp and I think they work a lot better than the actual, yes, mortise milling cutters for a mortise drilling machine. We have a normal drill chuck here. Just unscrew it, take out the milling cutter, put the drill in. I actually like to put it right in right up to the shaft because I've seen that when you drill very hard wood and this drill is so sharp, it slips backwards in the drill chuck. You have to drill everything again because the depth is no longer right. You don't have to force the drill bit down so much here either. Then we bring this part over a little bit. I set the drill bit. It's obviously still much too deep. So, we're now at a little more than 2 centimeters. We have a mark here. It doesn't have to be that precise. We have a little bit of space anyway. I'll check it once because the drill bit is obviously a little slanted at the front. I'll mark my parts now. That's very, very easy to do. I'll number them here. Just so I know, okay, I've measured this part here. We'll mark it down to 1 centimeter. And we'll make this mark here in this 10 and 2. Transfer the mark here once. Because here is the same thing again. We just have to align one position. And then we'll have the other with the stop. Now the same thing happens again. Only as if we were milling a long hole. We are now going to mark the left and right positions. We have the position here. We can clamp it in place. Let's see where we are here. We can leave it like this for now, because it really doesn't matter if the hole is half a centimeter further down. The connection with this dowel will definitely be stable enough. Nevertheless, so that we can mount it properly, we are going to use a stop here too. Clamp it in place and then we can get started. And now we can actually proceed in the same way as we did with the long hole on the counterpart. Blow the chips over once. We want the hole to be here. Clamp it in place once and drill it. Yes, now we can try the whole thing out. The dowels go in here first and our post goes in here. Of course, in this case we now have a dowel connection. This means that we can no longer adjust the height of our piece. But it's not a problem because we can determine and adjust the dowel position very precisely. That's why this isn't a big deal. It's actually more of an advantage. We just don't move our parts around. One machine, two types of connection. Simple, quick, very safe. The next one is a bit more stable and if we want to extend it a bit, we can make the whole thing very, very large and create an ultra-stable connection with one machine. Now we can put the whole thing together with a bit of wood glue.
Guys, you wouldn't believe how happy I am that I can finally store all my sandpaper neatly and sort it here in the workshop so that I have the best possible access to it. This was another small step in the right direction. Now you know what you can do with a cross-section drill, among other things. We will definitely use it again in future projects. Feel free to write in the comments what you think of it. And otherwise, I hope you have a great day. Ciao.